here is a female mountain pine beetle. I, I just looked a minute ago at one of these uh, attack sites and she was actually embedded in the resin. Uh, she tried to go in, she took a taste of the tree, and the tree was successfully able to kill her uh, and repel her. So she is dead, she won't be reproducing, uh, but many of her cohort did successfully enter the tree. So what makes this outbreak different from the other outbreaks is, uh, first of all, the sheer amount of susceptible pine on the landscape of British Columbia right now. Um, we've never had this much pine in these age classes of mature and over mature, 60 years old and older. And that's largely the consequence of fire suppression. Um, starting after World War II, uh, we became very good at fire suppression. Um, and when you remove fire from the ecosystem uh, to the extent that we have, uh, you create large patches of pine that uh, just grow older. Um, and so when you get this much pine in these age classes, uh, it, it sets conditions uh, for an extensive mountain pine beetle outbreak. Um, they're just doing what they're naturally programmed to do. I mean, they're, they're an integral part of the ecosystems like that. In many senses, uh, this outbreak is not an insect problem at all. It's a tree problem. Um, and, and we've become much, much wiser in the last few years on, on how to incorporate fire into the ecosystems again. In fact, the amount of mature logical pine in the province more than quadrupled between 1910 and 1990 uh, simply because we suppressed fire. The second thing that makes this outbreak so much different than previous outbreaks is perhaps climate change. Uh, we're seeing outbreaks at uh, higher elevations than we've ever seen before, and we're seeing them at, at more northern uh, latitudes than we've ever seen before. 